Okay, welcome class. I hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to be talking about measurement, which is from chapter two in your textbook. And our goal today is that we introduce the concept of, of what measurement looks like in science and we start using SI as a system of measurement and get more acquainted with it. Okay, so just think of this, like to, up to this point we've been doing we've been doing science and we've been basically qualitative. So qualitative it would be like we would make qualitative observations in a chem lab. So for example, in the evidence for chemical change lab, we would say something to the effect that the solution is blue. The precipitate is uh, formed and forms a blue precipitate. So these are all things that describe things, but they're not like quantities. So measurements tend to be extensive physical properties where there is something that you come up with and there's a quantity. So a quantity, there's always a quantity in, involved in some measurement. Now it could be you're measuring your height. And so we would say, oh, you're six foot two inches in our system or whatever that is. What we're saying is, is that your height compared to this thing called a foot that everybody generally accepts. So in measurement, there's always some sort of quantity. That quantity is a comparison to some standard. So it could be, you know, if we're talking about our system, we talk about weight, we're talking about pounds. So how, how much do you weigh compared to a pound? That is what we do in measurement. Okay, now, unfortunately, we cannot do that when we talk about chemistry because this picture, all right, so this, this is, um, so you can see that the rest of the world is gray. And then there's three countries that are red. And one, this one right here, is the USA. Hoo -hoo. Okay, and then we have this country and this country. Okay, and all the rest of the world uses the metric system or the SI system. And the US and these three other two countries do not. And I'm always surprised by this. And I'm always like a little saddened because... I feel like we're missing out on something because the metric system is way easier in our system. Our system makes no sense. I mean, think about it. Like how many inches or feet are in a mile, inches are in a mile. Like these are just random numbers that people just came up with. And remember, measurement is some standard. And we've always just accepted measurement in this country. And we've kind of uh, resisted change. But I think it's time. I think you guys could be the generation that go metric. And it just makes sense. I mean, then you don't have to learn two systems of measurement and this unit becomes much easier. So let's save time. So anyways, this country, did you guess what it is? So this is Liberia right here. And then this is Myanmar, formerly Burma. So these other countries do not use the metric system. So we call our system of measurement, the US customary system, because it's just based off of random customary facts, randomness, so people, Let's get with the times. Okay, so um, so the SI system is much, much better. So the SI system of measurement, um, it's used all over the world. So it's actually French. It was developed off of the metric system. It has seven fundamental base units that all measurements are based off of. Remember, we talk standards, right? In measurement, there has to be some standard. These are the universal standards of, of all measurement. And then anything else, any other type of measurement is derived from these basic seven. Okay, so the basic seven measurements for length, it's the meter. That makes sense, right? So the meter is the basic length. For mass, it's the kilogram. Now, a lot of students are like, why isn't it the gram? Well, it's not the gram because the gram is really, really small. So the kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. So it's it's what we use for the, the mass. Um, for time, it's the second. That's everywhere. Even our system is time and second. Temperature, it's Kelvin. It's really closely related to Celsius. We'll talk about it. Amount of substance, this is going to be a huge concept in chemistry. It's the mole. And then electric current is amps and luminous intensity. So basically we have in the SI system, we have these seven fundamental units and you pretty much need to know length. We use that one all the time. Mass, time, temperature, amount of substance. So those five, so know those five. And then you know, these are important, but we're not gonna really use those much in chem. So you're probably okay not knowing those. I won't ask you about those. Okay, now just some general things about them. So mass is the quantity or the amount of matter. Um, it's based off the kilogram. And, you know, a lot of physics, te physics teachers get upset about this and we'll be in lab and we'll say, this weighs this much. And that's a misnomer. You shouldn't say that. It's actually, the mass is this amount. So weight is gravitational pull your weight changes but mass is how much matter you have so that doesn't change no matter what so that's just a little thing that they always you know talk about for length like 
you know, a, a lot of kids struggle with this one because we're used to miles, feet, inches. And so in the SI system, there's the meter, the kilometer, uh, centimeter. And so what they can do is you can take, this is the beauty of the SI metric, is you can take a really big measurement and just change the prefix. And, you you know, since it's all base 10, it's like super easy. And the rest of the world just laughs at us for the way we handle metric conversion or, you know, our conversions, you know, if we're trying to figure out my inches away or houses, like that's really hard math. I mean, it's not that hard, but it's annoying. Whereas you could do that in centimeters in like an instant with the metric system. It's so much easier, so much better. And that's why the rest of the world uses it. And we folks, we are behind. Okay, so um, here's the metric prefixes and you'll have to know these bad boys on here. Um, pretty much these are the main ones on it. And and the number they that they have is listed on there. And, and today we're not gonna spend a lot of time doing metric conversions. We're just gonna do a couple and kind of talk about it. But like each of these prefixes represents like a multiplier, how much bigger it is. So we'll start today. We're pretty much going to work with like kilo. So kilo is 10 to the third. So 10 to the third is, is basically a thousand. So here's what that means. If I have one kilometer, I have a thousand meters. If I have one kiloliter, it exists, right? I have a thousand liters. Basically kilo means it's a thousand times more than the base. The base could be anything. It could be meters, it could be grams, anything in the SI system could be a base. You can even have seconds, you can have a microsecond, like that exists. And then deci, so that's this guy right here, deci means 10th, like a decade. Okay, so if I have 10 decimeters, that's that's a 10th, uh, a tenth of that would be one meter. So by definition, the prefixes can be used to quickly convert to, to one or the other. Centi is like a century, right? It means a hundred milli, a hundredth. So there's a hundred centimeters in one meter. Milli means um, like millennia, a thousand. And then micro means a millionth and nano means a billionth and pico means a trillionth. So like these are the ones, but for us today, we're just gonna kind of focus on these few to get started and then we'll do some more higher level ones later. This is more like, hey, let's get started with measurement. Let's start messing around. Let's do a cool activity with measurement. Okay, so that's where we're at. Okay, let me put this back. All right, so here's here's how you do this. Okay, and this is there's many ways to do it. Like, and, and I don't really care right now how you get this, but you have to know how to convert between different units in the metric system. And because it's base 10, it's super easy. So I'll show you one method and you can do any method today to solve as long as you get them right. Okay, so we have 1.8. I think I need to change my color. We're gonna go more of the yellow. Okay, that looks good. So let's go with that. All right, so there, there we are. Well, it doesn't seem like it's yellow to me. Let's try it again. Oh yeah, way better. Okay, so we're gonna go 1.8 meters and we're gonna use something called dimensional analysis, which we'll be covering in depth. So this doesn't make sense yet. Um, it's okay, you can do it any other way to solve it. You can work through it. Again, we're just kind of starting metric conversions. But the idea is that centi means a hundredth. So there's a hundred centimeters in one meter, right? So. Um, dimensional analysis, what it does is it sets up this conversion factor. So conversion means they're equal in such a way that if you can divide something by itself, so one meter over a hundred centimeters, what happens is the meters get canceled out. And so we have 180 centimeters is equal to 1.8 meters. Now, a lot of people are like, well, Mr. Wood, can I just move the decimal point over? And if you look back, you could. Yeah, there's more than one way to solve this. And today there's introductory. Eventually, we're going to do ones that are hard. But like, if we go back up one here, let me go back. Sorry. So like, if you had, you, you can also use like a number chart here. So I'll just kind of show it. Remember the last one, we had 1.8 meters right here. Do you see how we have to move the decimal over one or two? two spots over. So you would have 180 centimeters. Like that's totally cool to do that too, especially if you're just kind of getting used to them doing them in your head. Again, we're just introducing this today. We're not like getting super in depth with it yet, which we will. Okay. Um, next, if we have 1.9 meters, how many kilometers do you, have, do you have? So again, you can go back to that number line and move the decimal, but here's what I know. I know kilo means a thousand. So I have a thousand meters in one kilometer, kilometer. 
So if I set this up, right, if I take this divided by a thousand and one kilometer up here and see how they cancel out. And again, we're going to be covering this more in depth later. Then if I take 1.9 divided by a thousand, I would get 0 0.0019 kilometers. Now, again, I can do that going back. Remember how, oops, remember how this works. So I have, we say 1.9 meters and we don't to go here. Oh, so, so now you can see that, that this is 10 to the third and this is 10 to the zero. So there's actually two other spots here and those belong to Hecto, Hecto and Deca. And so you could move that in three spots if you remember that from middle school science or whatever. Or you could just know that kilo means a thousand. If you divide by a thousand, you do it the same. Um, either way works. You know, you can even do some of the, some people can just do these in their head. And I'm not saying that that's where you have to be, but, you know, eventually. Okay. Now, if we have 18 grams, there's in, there's a thousand milligrams in one gram. And so again, one gram, a thousand milligrams. So multiplying that, that I would get one, 18,000 milligrams. So basically you're moving the decimal to and fro to the right or to the left to figure out um, how many, you know, how many places to move the decimal point or how much, what quantity is in it. It's much easier than actually having to do any math, at least in my mind. Okay. Um, so we're going to practice here. So I'll probably pause the video at this point, maybe practice a couple, see if you can get it. And then we'll finish up with a couple other slides. So here goes. Oops. Okay. So wrapping this up. So we have something called derived units. So there are things, so we have seven fundamental base units. Those are, you know, the liter, the kilogram, seconds, you know, the, those base things. And you can measure the, the amounts of those based off of like prefixes. So if you want it big or small, you just adjust the prefixes, um, you know, all the way from Terra, which is really, really big to Pigo, which is really, really small. And it's super easy to do. And then, you know, there are also units that you can kind of combine and those are called derived units where we have to combine things. So for example, to describe area, which is length times width, you have to use like square meters or square centimeters or something where there's multiple units. So you can't just describe it by meters because that would be length, but you, so you have to do meters squared because so two things to describe it. Or density, density is like kilograms per meters cubed or grams per milliliter. It's the amount of space per volume. Or a good one is speed, miles per hour, meters per second, right? It takes more than one thing to describe it. So all of these, all the rest of the units are pretty much derived units where we are able to figure them out based off of the combination of other units. So volume is a big one. So volume is length times width times height. And it's the amount of space something takes up and it's meters cubed. Now, meters cubed is huge. It's like the giant size of your desk. So it's a little big. So we typically use cubic centimeters or milliliters. And then the liter is basically equal to a thousand cubic centimeters or a thousand milliliters. Okay, so that pretty much ends our discussion. We're gonna, we're gonna try to practice a couple um, metric conversions. We'll talk about the importance of measurement and then we're gonna actually do it. So science is best you know, learned by doing. So we're gonna try some different types of measurement and explore this concept of SI system and how it affects our labs. All right, people, we done.